guys welcome back to another video tutorial and we are still on the topic of pseudocode algorithm and our main focus is on the control structure or structure that is used in the body of a pseudocode last video tutorial we identified two types of control structures that are used and those were the sequential as well as the decision so our third structure that we are going to be proceeding with is known as the loop or the repetition control structure and then for this tutorial we will be looking at one of two and for this it would be the for loop but the second type of loop that we have is the while loop now what is a loop as it relates to pseudocode and control structure now a loop as the second name to this list indicates is when a uh, problem solving would involve repeating a certain step a number of times now where the for loop is concerned this type of loop is used whenever we know the amount of time that a set of instruction is expected to be repeated so let's say we are supposed to collect um, information from 10 students then automatically we know that this loop is expected to run 10 times whereas the while loop this is a loop that we refer to as an unconditional or an unbounded loop meaning that we might not know the amount of time that this loop is expected to run and as a result we would have it running until the user or users decide to stop using this type of um, looping construct and as we go along again we will be looking at problems and solutions in terms of these but for emphasis again the purpose of this video tutorial is to highlight the for loop now the syntax or the outline that we use for the for loop is seen here where we have for the first line the keyword for indicating that this is a for loop and then followed by our variable name. We have also been looking at variables in terms of these are placeholders where our values that the user enter is stored. So for variable followed by the assignment or the equal sign to indicate what is our start value and what is our end value. So in this case, let's say we are expected to collect five names or five numbers from a user then we would start off by using our keyword for and then the variable would have been the name of the person if it is we're collecting names so that would be our variable followed by our equal sign and then it would ask us what number would we want to start collecting names from so in this case automatically we would use a number one and the two end value indicates that what would be the last number that we are expected to collect for the names and we did say five so our start value would be one and it would move all the way to five and then our keyword that goes with the for loop is do so they're saying for this variable name we are expected to collect one to five names and then what exactly are we supposed to do during this process well from here the action to be repeated would be taking place so let's say for example we are expected to give the user a prompt to enter their name so one action would be the keyword print and again this is used whenever we want to display something on the screen as we're able to see this information now so it would be print and let's say it says please enter your name from here 
the user would see this message and then in the background once they enter that name the next action would be to read this name and store it within the location called name so the computer would then proceed to read in this accepting this um, name that the user entered and then store it within that location so once the first user has completed this, the process would continue until the fifth person has entered their name. After the fifth person has entered their name, then the, um, the program would not be expected to collect any more values. Why? Because we had an end value for five and that is the reason why we could not exceed this number because we instructed the computer once the fifth person has entered their information this is it don't collect anything more so again in the action we would give the user display message and then read that information we collected from them into a memory location in the computer from there we could have another step where we print the output of what the user entered so we could also have an output to say your name is and then we show the name that they entered so that could all be the action that is expected to be repeated and then finally if we don't have anything remaining any other action to perform then we would proceed to end our for loop and as you realize we no longer have the end itself because this indicates that we're ending a type of loop called a for loop so that is why we have end for in this case similar to how we had the end if all right so let's now proceed to our first example where we are looking at a problem and then us forward into the solution so the problem is to write a pseudocode algorithm to print a table to find the square of numbers 1 to 10. So here we already know that we will be using a for loop because we know the amount of time or the amount of numbers that we are expected to collect for. So in this case we know that we have a start value of 1 and we have an end value of 10. So after we have collected all 10 numbers from the user then the program would not be collecting any additional thing because the 10 was the maximum number that we were accepting. So let's proceed now to see how the solution looks. Again, um, to my left here, we have the syntax that we follow. Just a reminder from earlier to show you how our solution came about. So again, we start off with our keyword the for to indicating that we're completing a for loop and then we would proceed to have the variable. Now in this case, they did tell us that we're supposed to find the square of some numbers. So let's say our broad heading or our placeholder is called numbers. All right, and then from here we have our assignment value or assignment symbol, which is the equal sign and then we would proceed to outline our start value if we remember or we can recall our start value was one and then our keyword two to indicate that we are also looking to collect an end value which was 10. from here we would be uh introduced to our keyword the do to indicate what action is it that we're expected to complete from this point forward well again for this solution, we were expected to find the square of the numbers, all right? And we know that the square, the formula to find the square would be the number multiplied by itself. So in this case, we would just outline the formula to find the square. So square would be equal to number multiplied by itself number. And if it is that we were expected to print out the result to the user at the end of it, then we would print whatever it is the square was. From here, we were not expected to do anything else, so we would proceed to end our for loop. And then this would have been the solution for the square of those numbers. So let's see a second example here. The problem is to write an algorithm to read 20 numbers and then print the lowest. 
solution for this we are expected to collect some numbers but they should also be having a location where we are supposed to store which of the numbers is the lowest so in a case like this we would begin by having what we refer to as an initialization and if we can recall the initialization was where we assigned a default value to a variable name so in this case we want to have something stored in the lowest so that whatever numbers are coming in we can test it against each other to see which one was the lowest or the smallest so let's say we were given a default number of 999 so currently that was the lowest number that was entered so far from here we can now proceed to our solution again we start off with our for loop or for to indicating that we're completing a for loop followed by the variable name so we already know that we're expected to find the lowest but the lowest for what the variable would be number Again, we continue with our equal sign to indicate that we are now collecting our start value moving to the end value. So the start value, 1, and then we are expected to continue all the way to 20 numbers. Again, our keyword do indicates that the next set of lines is where we will be performing some app. From here, the user in this case would have been prompt to enter a number so our keyword to give the user a message on screen to tell them what to do is print and then followed by the message so they ask to enter a number from here the user would enter a number and then the computer would read this number into a location similar to how we initialize um lowest for 999 we would also have a location to store for number all right so we read the number and then from here we want to test because we're finding the lowest we know that we would have to be doing some comparison here so again remember we use an if statement when we're trying to decide or make a decision between two options so in this case we're testing to see if the number that the user enter is less than what is currently stored in the lowest if it is then what should we do we would do the formula and now store what that number was in the location called lowest so whatever number the user entered if it is lower than the 999 then that value would be replaced with what the user entered and then from here we end our if statement because there was nothing else to decide between or among and then we would print our lowest so print the lowest on screen showing the user what is the current lowest value and after that we would end our for loop so let's see how um, a live example of this would be shown or be interacted with by a user so again we start off with our initialization showing the user that hey currently 999 is our lowest value from here they would see this message enter a number from this point on they would be expected to enter a number and then the computer would read that number so it was 22 the number that they entered and after that the next part of the solution we would be now testing to see if this number that they entered is less than what is currently stored in the location called lowest so they're testing now to say if the 22 that the user entered is less than our current 999 which is the lowest then you're gonna proceed to doing this from this point you're gonna change the location that is called lowest from 999 to show 22 because 22 is now the current lowest value after that the user would now see the message the lowest number is 22 and then the loop would end a second example or is it the third third example problem is to write a pseudo code algorithm to read 100 numbers and find their sum after that you're expected to print the results of the sum 
the solution. So again, we initialize sum to indicate that we will be storing the results in this location. And by default, we don't have any starting value for sum, so the default value would be zero. From here, we start our for loop with the keyword for, followed by the variable name was number because we're expected to collect some numbers to be able to calculate the sum the equal sign assignment and then we're indicating what is our start value in our case it is starting from the value 1 all the way to the value 100 after this our keyword do to indicate what is the action that is supposed to be performed next from here on the user could get a message on screen to enter a number. After they see this message, they enter the number and then the computer reads it into the location called number. After that, calculations are now taking place to find the sum. So in, our, in this case, the sum would be whatever is stored in sum plus the next number or whatever number the rest of users are expected to enter. And then we would print the value of sum to show the user at the end of the 100, this is your sum. And finally, we can proceed to end our for loop. Again, we're gonna look at a live example of this on our left. Sum equals zero, we initialize to say currently the user, no user have entered any value. So we're setting zero for now until something starts happening. Next, we have the message displayed on screen to tell the user, hey, please enter a number here. And the user go ahead and enter the number 15 in our example here. So the computer reads this number 15 and store it in the variable location that is called number. After that, the computer now proceeds to do some calculations. So it is saying in order to find sum, we're gonna have our current value for sum which is zero being added to the number that the user entered, which is 15. This 15 is now assigned the new value for sum. And as you can see at the top there, our zero is replaced with 15. So the next user that comes to enter a next number, let's say five, then the formula would now be five plus 15, which is 20. And again, the value for sum would change from 15 to 20. So each time the calculation is taking place, the value for sum is also changing. After that, all of the calculations would have been completed, the user was expected to see a message on screen to tell us, tell him or her or them the final result for sum. So the message pops up to say the sum is 15. So after you added all of your numbers together, the final result, the final value, the final of sum is 15. And that way the user is now aware of what the sum is. And that would have ended that process. Thank you so very much for tuning to this video presentation. Do hope you learned something new and please stay tuned for the next video tutorials to come.